Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, <clears throat> oh, so what I thought I would do for you all today, I want to basically do, and I will turn this into a bit of a series so I can cover most skin types. What I want to do for you guys today is I want to talk about prepping the skin for um, makeup. And mainly I want to talk about oily skin and how to kind of ensure that your makeup lasts a lot longer that you're getting a really nice smooth finish and that you're getting the best out of your products. So with an oilier skin, there's a lot of information about looking after oily skin when it comes to skincare. And looking after your skin is the first kind of step to having great makeup. You have to have a really great base. And that doesn't mean you can't have blemishes, you can't have fine lines or anything like that, but it's more the texture of your skin and making sure that you're not over dehydrating yourself or over hydrating or, you know, all these other little things. Because you can still have um, blemishes, you can still have fine lines, you can still have um, like pot marks like I have from like old chicken pots and still have a really smooth, smooth finish. So when I say about making sure you're using good skincare, it's looking after your skin and you will notice a big difference. However, you may have heard me mention before that I have three skincare routines. So I have my morning skincare routine, I have my evening skincare routine, and I have my pre-makeup skincare routine. So my morning, just every day, I don't wear makeup every day, I only really wear makeup when I'm filming. I definitely don't wear it if I'm doing a client or anything like that, because who has time to touch up? So my morning routine consists of just washing my face and then a toner and then a moisturizer. It's like really, really simple. So my evening routine consists of my active ingredients and my things that are a little bit more um, for a purpose, like anti-aging, hydrating. I use oils. I use a lot of hydration, things that I wouldn't dare use if I'm going to wear makeup. So when you're doing your skincare before your makeup, here's what you have to think about. Take your skin type literally literally be like, I'm oily, I need oily prep. Whereas if you have an oilier skin in your normal skincare routine, you want to still add moisture and, you know, um, repair the skin and all this kind of stuff. Whereas before our makeup, what we want to think about with our skincare is how long our makeup is going to last. So we still want to prep for skin in the correct way, but we're thinking about longevity of wear of makeup. So don't take that wrong that you don't want to hydrate if you have oily skin because uh, sometimes I say this and a lot of people take it the wrong way. Just for you guys watching, anyone who thinks I'm my twin brother James, because I'm talking about skincare, I am not. We are two different people. James's channel is all about skincare. I don't know much about skincare at all. I can prep your face for makeup, but that's it. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't really give advice on um, skincare. I don't know what 1% squalid seminide is. So just before we get into the rest of it, say so if you guys don't know who I am, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. I have been doing makeup for almost 13 years now. So I have prepped a lot of faces um, for a lot of different occasions, whether that's a wedding or whether that's a model who is gonna have a makeup redone again in like 10 minutes time. So what I'm gonna tell and share with you today, it comes from my experience with different types of oily skin, because you can be oily, but then there's different types of oily skin. So I'm gonna walk it through with you. My skin type is oily dehydrated. We're gonna focus on the oily parts, but I will slip in a few little dehydrated tips. I have cleansed my face this morning. I've used um, a toner and that's it. So with an oilier skin, um, just in general and also before makeup, we do still want to hydrate. We still wanna use a little bit of moisture to help kind of even out the surface of the skin, the skin's texture. And also moisture does kind of help makeup grip a little bit more, um, I find sometimes. So what I'm gonna be using is this Dr. Sam's, it's too light in here, can you see it? Yeah, the Dr. Sam's Flawless Moisturizer. And you'll notice here it says light. Can you see it or is it too bright? 2000s beauty person. Yeah, light. So what I really, really like about this moisturizer is you'll see it's almost like this gel kind of fluid. Now when you're prepping an oily skin, your moisturizers, what you want to look for are the words fluid or um, gel or water or light, you know? You don't wanna go for cream, um, heavy creams, anti-aging creams. You don't wanna use like Nivea, for example. You don't wanna use those heavy, heavy creams. We just want something that is fluid, almost water-based, because we're still adding hydration, but it's very quickly absorbed into the skin. And then I really, really work that into the areas that I know are gonna be slightly more oily. So for example, the middle of the forehead here, I kind of just, two fingers and I kind of just hold <laughs> the skin and kind of push that into the skin without being too rough. And then same again, round the nose here where oil tends to um, secrete. I hate that word, that's so gross. 
come out. We'll just say come out. Wait for that van to stop backing up. So what I've done first is I've applied a really light layer. And this is what you can do for all skin types, whether it be dry or oily. I'm going to let that sit for just a few minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the face and I'm going to see where do I have some excess moisture still? What parts of the skin has drunk it up? And what parts of the skin isn't taking in any more moisture? The areas that have um, sucked in that moisture, I'm then going to add a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of moisture back there. And in the areas where I can still feel like a layer of hydration, I'm just going to gently tap that away with a tissue or like a sponge. Okay, so a few minutes later and actually my skin texture is feeling quite even. Just around my nose here is quite um, oily still. So I'm just actually gonna take a beauty sponge and I'm just gonna tap away excess um, oil. You can do this with a tissue, but you know, let's be a little bit more, um, what's the word? Planet, about a planet, eco-friendly. <laughs> So we have hydrated our skin. I'm feeling plump in the face without being too oily. Primer, okay, it's up to you if you want to use primer. I I use primers on skin in quite, not drastic, but occasions that might need it a little bit more. If somebody's skin is more oily dehydrated, then I'll use a primer in the areas that are slightly more dehydrated. For example, around the nose, sometimes the cheeks can be dehydrated as well. So a few primers that I really like for oilier skins. First of all is the Milk Hydro Grip. Um, so this is great because it has a texture of a gel. Again, when I talked about using products on the skin for oilier skin, we want gels, fluids, that kind of thing. It smooths really well over skin texture, including like larger pores. Um, and with oilier skin, we do tend to have larger pores. Not everyone, but sometimes. So this is a really, really great one to use as a primer especially if you have oily dehydrated skin. So next up is the Fasali Liquid Powder. Now, you may see this being used online really, really wrong. If you just use one drop in each area that gets oily, it's a really, really great priming powder. And this is really great as well if you want to add that powder step to your priming, which by the way, isn't a new TikTok hack. This is a technique that's been around for years and years and years. So it's great to have a product that kind of incorporates the two. More affordable option is the Elf Putty Primer. This is the matte version. And I used this and actually really, really liked it. However, I do think it has a bit of a slip to it. Um, so do be careful if you are excessively oily, maybe don't use it, maybe don't even use a primer. Let's just talk about silicon based primers, things like Porefessional, for example, or those kind of like really slippy textures. I do not like those primers for oily skin. Although they are marketed towards larger pores, they just don't work as well as they should. They leave a surface on top of the skin that is just there to be interfered with. When oil comes through, it doesn't stop oil from coming through. It isn't gonna stop it. It kind of distributes oil evenly around the face. Now, when your oil comes through that way, and when it kind of gets involved with primers and all this kind of stuff under your makeup, it then starts to make your makeup separate and makes it even more difficult to touch up um, and repair and fix. So I will stay away from those slippy silicone primers. You do also have the option here as well. To, if you don't want to use a primer, you can actually just use a setting spray. So not a hydrating mist, not a like refreshing mist, an actual setting spray. I'm not a fan of setting sprays over foundation. I like a hydrating mist over foundation. However, I do like setting spray. This is the um, D stick from Urban Decay. I do like a setting spray touching the skin because it creates that barrier between your makeup and the oil that's coming through your skin. Yes, we can set from the outside, but ideally we want to create a barrier from what's actually destroying our makeup, which is oil. I always say this, and some of you might be sick of this example. So let's say this like pastel palette is our skin and this is our foundation. And then we're putting our setting spray on top of our foundation. What is breaking our foundation down for oily people is our oil coming through our skin. So what's breaking down our foundation is coming from this side. So let's put a barrier between them. If that make, Does that make sense? You kind of want to block that oil from coming through. I'm actually going to use a tiny bit of the um, Fasali liquid powder, and I'm not going to drop it on my face because that's not how you do it. I'm literally taking a pea size amount. And I'm gonna concentrate that right on the center of the forehead. And I'm really gonna push that into the skin. 
when you're doing skincare on, on yourself or a client before makeup, you really want to ensure that your skin absorbs that product. It really is all about prep. You can buy a foundation for oily skin. You can buy concealer for oily skin, but you, if you haven't controlled that oil underneath, then there really is no point. We're buying products for oily skin because our skin produces oil. So let's control that oil a little bit. Around my nose here, I am gonna be a little bit more intense and I'm really gonna push that into that area really kind of pressing. So if you do also get oily on the cheeks, here you can just tap a little bit of excess across and do this, do the same with any kind of primer that you choose to use. However, with oily skin, I really do think a specialist primer like this would be nicer. I think it's really important when you're prepping an oily skin to kind of see how everything is going with your skin. Let that sit. Are you getting oily from a certain product? Is a certain product giving you excess moisture? So it's a few minutes later. I'm gonna take the same sponge I used before, but I'm gonna take the other side um, because we already used this side to blot oil. And I'm just gonna go back around those areas, really pushing and making sure I'm absorbing any excess moisture. Our skin has had a time to absorb any moisture and any product that we just used. So now our skin should be nice and smooth and mattified. Let's talk about foundations for oily skin. Foundations for oily skin, for some reason, tend to be full, full coverage. It's absolutely fine if you want a full coverage, that's great. However, my opinion on full coverage foundations on oily skin, I don't personally like it. I feel like, as an oily person with oily skin, the more makeup I have on my skin, the more product there is to break down eventually. Here's the deal with oily skin. We can't keep matte all day. The longest I've managed to keep my skin mattified is about five hours, which is great for oily skin. When it comes to oil breaking through everything, eventually, because it will, it's inevitable. There's no real answer to keep away oil. We want to think about how quickly we can repair. So don't think about touching up your foundation and how quickly you can touch it up when the oil comes through. Think about what you're gonna do, what steps you're gonna take to repair the skin, repair the foundation. So even if you're using a full coverage foundation, do a tiny, tiny bit at a time. Where's that brush? So a great way to get a good coverage without using too much product is using a dense brush. So I really, really like Sigma's Flat Kabuki brush. This is one of my absolute favorite brushes I think of all time for foundation, um, for powder, for contour, for anything. Just that flat tip gives you a really, really nice coverage and applies product quickly, but naturally. It looks very, very natural. So I'm going to take my foundation. So I'm going to do my foundation first. I'm not going to do concealer yet. No concealer. Because what we want to do is use as little product as possible, but get the coverage that we want. So we're gonna start with our main kind of product first, see how much coverage we can get, and then see where we need to cover, where we need a little bit more coverage. And the way I'm doing it is I'm just kind of tapping that product into place. We wanna take time. We wanna make sure that we're blending by just tap, tap, tapping. And the reason I'm tapping as well is because as somebody with bigger pores, oilier skin, so has slightly bigger pores, too much movement, too much buffing, too much everything can kind of be a downfall. You kind of want to push that product into a skin and you'll see less pore texture. You'll get more of a natural finish as well. See how much that covers and I'm only using a tiny, tiny amount of product. That's why this brush, especially this kind of shape and this kind of design is incredible for um, naturally fully covered um, skin. Now I don't really have pores on my forehead so I am going to give it a little buff. Well, I do, but you know, they're not like large. Everyone has pores in their forehead, you know what I'm saying? I really like like a, I just died kind of lip. I wish that would come back into fashion. No, I don't actually, that's terrible, that's a terrible time. Okay, so again, I'm gonna let that sit for like a minute and then just kind of assess my situation. I can go back over with a sponge and tap to get rid of any excess product, any excess moisture, or I can just go and tap in with my brush again. So I'm gonna just leave that just for a moment. Okay, so it's just been just a few minutes. I'm gonna just tap over the areas where I feel like maybe I put on a little bit too much coverage and I'm getting a little bit of shine. The foundation I use isn't actually made for oily skin. So it is gonna have like a natural kind of shine to it. But I do like to have a shine to my skin. But as we've prepped the skin um, correctly underneath, you can afford to have that little bit of a, an extra shine. So concealer, we're not doing concealer under the eyes just yet. We're gonna go into the skin and do concealer in areas where we want a little bit more coverage on the skin. So I'm gonna take my Sigma um, Bake Precision. You guys know I'm not gonna use it to bake. It's actually a really nice kind of flat brush. And I'm just gonna use it to push 
concealer in the areas where I like a bit more coverage. I'm very red around my nose here and on my cheeks. So I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap in that area. And I'm really making sure to concentrate the concealer just where I want it. Again, we don't want excessive product on excessively oily skin or oily skin. We just want to do what's necessary because we're just gonna end up having to touch it up anyway if we use way too much. So now I'm just gonna look for some blemishes and just give those a little bit more coverage. Okay, let's talk about concealing under the eyes. Now, with oily skin, listen to me. We don't want to do the whole Instagrammy concealer under the eyes everywhere because we're adding excess product, which means more product for our oily skin to break down and ruin. We want to use it just where is necessary. So I'm gonna take an eyeshadow blending brush. So I'm only gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of the concealer. One dot here, two dots here. We're not gonna take it all the way down the size of a nose because the nose is one of the oiliest parts of our skin. Even your cheeks can be extremely oily. So tapping that concealer, cut off that outside corner of the eye. Get rid of that redness or that colour that can sometimes be in the outside corner. On the inside corner as well, I'm also going to tap. I'm kind of just going to push that product right into that corner. And then just gently drag along just a tiny bit. You guys want to see my concealer technique a million times. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. And just keep tapping in place until that concealer has blended in. We don't want to drag it around the face too much. Now with any excess product that's left on my brush, I'm then going to tap just under the eye here. So we're not putting too much product on the area that tends to crease. Just like so, that's enough for me. If you want to go lighter, just dot a tiny bit more on that inside and outside corner. Now let's talk about oily eyelids. Oily eyelids are the bane of my life. <laughs> Some people are really lucky. Some people don't have oily eyelids. However, I do and a lot of people do. And this is why I haven't put any concealer on my eyelid at all. No product on the eyelid, no foundation, no concealer, nothing. Because it's oil, it's just gonna break that down. We know oil breaks down makeup. We use oil to remove our makeup. Even waterproof, really heavy duty makeup we remove with oil. Eyelids can be incredibly oily. If you're not wearing an eye base or an eye primer, sometimes you might get smudges under the eye where oil have, has kind of broken down your mascara or your eyeliner um, and it's smudging all down here or it might just separate. So I'm gonna take the Sigma Eyeshadow Primer. This is the shade Ignite. This is my favorite for me. They do many, many shades. So many different shades for many different skin tones. And they also do ones that have a slight shine to it also. And I'm just gonna use a tiny little bit on my eyelids just to even it out. And a great thing about this I know I've recommended MAC Paint Pots quite a lot, but I'm actually preferring these Sigma ones because they are dry without being too dry and they're sticky without being uncomfortable. So I really, really like them. Okay, let's talk about powder. If, this is gonna sound ridiculous, if you're an oily person and you can avoid powder, then do. However, I know for me, powder is like a, um, lock it and seal it and I wouldn't feel comfortable with, without putting powder on my face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, first of all, again, I'm gonna look at my face, I'm gonna take a sponge, I'm gonna blot away any excess shine that I see. Now, one thing I always say about powder, it doesn't have to be a full face product. Use powder when and where it's needed. So, where it's needed. I'm taking a powder brush that's quite dense and domed. This is the Sigma Concealer Blend Kabuki. This isn't an advert for Sigma, by the way. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny bit into my powder. This is the only powder I've ever touched pan on. I'm gonna tap off. I don't wanna bake. I don't wanna be putting loads and loads of powder again, because powder still counts as product. So we still don't want to use too much. And I'm just gonna push that into the areas where I know I'm oily only. I'm not going to take it over the whole face. I'm going to do it where I'm shining a little bit more now and I'm just going to keep pushing like this and tapping. I'm going to avoid the eye area. So I've only applied powder to the areas that needed the powder. I haven't gone up here. I haven't gone too much around here. I haven't done like these areas of forehead. I kept it all nice and um, kind of as natural as possible. I'm not going to use a setting spray after this. I'm not going to use a hydrating mist. I'm going to lock it and keep this skin product like this. Now we can go on with um, powder contour, things like that, highlighter, whatever you want to do. So let's talk about touching up the foundation later on. We haven't used that much powder, so hopefully as you start to get oily, it isn't gonna make this congealed kind of clay-like texture. It's gonna just look like oily foundation. 
sponge take your sponge again and tap tap for areas don't don't wipe don't wipe because you're interfering with that product don't put on more powder tap it away with a sponge or get a tissue you know like the kind of two ply tissues that you can kind of peel away the layers from each other one of them use one layer and gently tap that on the face as well nothing excessive remember all right guys i hope that helped a little bit um people with oily skin i hope it all kind of made sense this is how we can get a nice kind of natural finish um for oily skin without being excessive and it's gonna last. Please leave your questions if you have any um, concerns about anything I said below and I will try and reply to those if I catch your comment. Thank you so much for joining me. Please consider subscribing as, if this helped you in any way or if you want to, you don't have to. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm here every Friday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. So I will see you Friday. Thank you so much for joining me again and I will see you very soon. Bye.